Do you realize that God cares about the details of your life and the details of a nation? Today is day 69. We're leaving, reading the final two chapters of the book of Numbers, chapter 35 and 36. Now, these may not be considered the crowning chapters of this uh of this uh, fantastic book, but there are some interesting things that you're going to find in here. There, these two chapters demonstrate how our awesome God is interested in the very minute details of our lives. Now, several million folks are represented. Now, consider that. Some say from three to five million people represented in the Jewish community, and yet God is concerned with the verdict of five women. Now, that is incredible. Their inheritance, God is concerned with, and he makes sure that they are fairly and equally taken care of. Now, first, while the Levites don't get to inherit the land, which has been discussed previously, they still need a place to live and a place to keep their things. So God has a plan. And all the tribes donate a pit, bit of the uh, parameters of their land uh, so that the Levites will have a place to stay. In fact, even a little land of which they can have livestock and sustain themselves. Well, in total, there are 58 villages representing this. It's also used to set up places for accidental murderers to live. Now, this seems interesting. It's called cities of refuge. Now, these are completely different than some of the uh, cities in our nation that are setting themselves up to harbor uh, actual criminals. Uh, th this is dealing with people who have accidentally been accused or have been accused of crimes uh, that they are innocent of. Now, God sets up standards for what constitutes murder versus that of manslaughter, and it involves weighing the killer's motives. Now, this is always difficult because it's a tough thing uh, since we can't see the people's or person's heart. So how can one determine accidental killing from intentional murder? Well, so these cities of refuges were set up, a place of which uh, uh, an account of the killer, uh, well, rather a killer who was accused would go to um, a waiting trial or a verdict of judgment. So uh, here God raises some very interesting questions He's giving four people to make judgments. Number one, did this person hate the person or have a reputation for hatred for the person that was killed? This was very important. If there was rumor or reputation that one person despised another and then there was death involved or murder involved, then that was an issue of which a question had to be raised. Secondly, did he use a tool that would certainly cause death? the weapon that was used or that which resulted in the death was of great interest because it could suggest if both he had a strong feeling of hatred along with using a weapon that obviously would do serious damage or kill, then that was. And then thirdly, he said uh, there, would, there had to be more than one witness. Two or more witnesses had to witness what had happened. Many of our laws here in the United States are actually founded on God, these God-given established processes. We understand some of motive and premeditative and accidental, intentional witnesses, all these things. In fact, many of our laws in this nation and legislative processes based upon uh, biblical precedent. So what if a proven innocent uh, person uh, was uh, released and then a close family member uh, of the victim wanted retribution. Well, thus is the city of refuge. Not a prison, but a witness protection program, so to speak. And so as long as they remained uh, there at the city refuge, they're protected. But if they leave, then all bets are off. They remained, notice in the scripture says that they would remain in the city of refuge until the priest died. That's a very interesting time frame, isn't it? And yet when we look into it, we realize once again, death is viewed, or death is viewed as an atonement for the wrongful death. Again, there's always death that pays the price of a penalty, and God established this as the timeline. Our God is amazing. It's in, he's interested in the minute details of your life, the life and the details of a nation, and God has established a precedent by which you and I can uh, actually 
uh, determined cases and situations. And for the, for the nation of Israel, he has helped them in establishing a means by which they could critique, judge, and determine innocence or guilt in a person's life. This, to me, is fascinating.